We need SSL. Let's encrypt makes getting SSL keys easy. Sometimes. And sometimes not. What the fuck is this? We know that we're going to need, in 2020, we need SSL, right? And probably right out of the gate. So how do we, yeah. I mean, because because otherwise. Nobody's going to trust the service that doesn't have their sign-on page on SSL. Guys, we're just going to use HTTP. It's fine. <laughs> I promise. Like, oh, your browser doesn't Orman. allow that anymore? Oh. So, so we know we need HTTPS. And so we've kind of got two choices. We can either buy an SSL cert from an online vendor. Like, I don't know, in the past, we've used the SSL store. Shout out SSL store. Um, or we can use Let's Encrypt, right? So Let's Encrypt is the free, I think, I don't know, how do you like open source? It does Mozilla really, I don't know exactly like their corporate government profit, structure. I assume. But they provide free SSL service. The problem with Let's Encrypt, and what we need to figure out is we're gonna have more than one box listening on the same subdomain. So for example, if we have ingest.requestmetrics.com, there's gonna be two A records, two boxes listing on that domain, and both <laughs> need SSL certificates. If we only had a single box, Let's Encrypt is super easy. We can use CertBot, which is created by the Electronic Frontier Foundation, and we can actually just have it basically do everything for us. And that's what we actually do for um, remote JS. That's a single box, and CertBot just kind of works, right? It creates a cron job, it updates itself, and like as long as you reboot your application, before the cert expires, you're good. <laughs> but what do we do about the web farm scenario? Or the multiple server on the same domain scenario? Well, so what does what does Let's Encrypt recommend? Like what is their what is their guidance on on using the same cert on two or more boxes? They have so you have two options, basically. Like, so they in their little like how to configuration or whatever, they mentioned two options. Because really there's two there's two ways you can get an SSL cert. The first way is through what's called an HTTP challenge. And the second way is through a DNS challenge. Let's talk about the DNS challenge first. The DNS challenge, you write a special text record in your domain metadata that they then look up to prove yeah. that you own the domain. Once you do this, you can get a wildcard certificate from them or multiple boxes, is my understanding, can make a request for the same cert. What was not clear is like if I have two boxes, do I have to create two text records? Or can I create one text record and it's good for some amount of time while both those boxes make challenges? My interpretation was each one was going to make a text record. That was mine as well. Mm, so we can't just, there's not just like a one-time thing that says we've created our validation text token or whatever in DNS and they give us like a passphrase or something that then we can just use anytime we want a domain no, or anytime to, we want a cert. So every 45 days or 90 days or however often you have to renew the cert, you have to do this dance again. So that's why they're like, you have to have API access to your domain provider. It has to be fast and it also has to propagate quickly. So like the way these challenges work, usually you want to like, you contact the Acme API. They give you back this thing that you have to put as a text record. You put the text record in your domain, you go back to the Acme API and say, hey, I think it's propagated. Why don't you see if it's there? And if it is, issue me the cert. The reason Namecheap was coming under fire, in addition to having a hard to use and sort of non-obvious API, is that their propagation is slow. So like you'd set the text record, but it wouldn't show up for 30 minutes. So you're like waiting. And, and the other- Is that the case with, because uh, Namecheap has like, the standard DNS and then premium DNS. Is it the same for both? I don't know. I didn't, okay. I actually didn't see anyone mention the premium DNS specifically. I've always wondered what the benefit, <laughs> why you would bother paying for that, um, considering how DNS works. But like maybe that is the whole, the whole thing around we make our regular DNS shitty propagations that you buy this thing. And, and, and like I kind of, yeah, like do they, so what, what it, so I did a lot of like lurking on the, excuse me, the Let's Encrypt forums. And it seems like for, like, and especially for the guys, they're doing like friggin' Docker, right? Where they're spinning up like 30 of these front end servers. What most of them seem to do is they use the HTTP challenge. And they, so like um, every time a box wants to get a cert with HTTP, what it does is it goes to the Acme API and it says, hey, I'm this box on this domain. 
I want like I want a cert. So then Acme actually requests a cert from like a well-known URL on that box. Um, so the problem with a web farm is you don't know which box you're gonna hit, right? Like if box mm. A requests the cert, the challenge is written on box A's hard drive. But if if Let's Encrypt comes in and accidentally hits box B, that doesn't have that magical challenge token on it. So the way that they like do it is you can actually set that well-known URL up to redirect to a single server. So like all, say you've got A, B, and C boxes, A, B, and C could just redirect to A, who is the only one who handles certificate stuff. Once A gets the cert, he puts it in like S3 or somewhere, and like B and C, every day they just have a cron job that pulls down the cert from S3. Or maybe all three mm. boxes do. You have to admit, it's pretty uncloudy, if you will, right? Like it's not, it's not you know, fail proof. So, yeah. So it's so like, and, oh man. So like, do you have to store it in S3 or can you use that challenge token multiple times and just have every, like it, hy hypothetically, what if, what if it didn't matter which web farm or which box in the web farm got the challenge? We just wrote it to our backend data store. And it's just part of our data model, like the last challenge token. And then every day the box is just so got you can, that so you can ask for it. So well, so you can do that, uh, but it's a one-time challenge. So if you have three boxes, right? Uh, like they're gonna they're gonna each have to do that, which we could do, right? Like sort of stagger them, mm -hmm. um, or uh, we could do that. And then they could just farm, like whatever box gets it could farm the cert out to the other boxes. Um, the other thing that Jordan mentioned and is worth mentioning too is that you can request up to five of the same cert per week. So if you have six boxes, you can only make five challenges for that, that subdomain in a week. And that sixth guy, he's out of luck till next week. Hmm. So... Um, <laughs> like, all the options kind of suck, right? No, so like in in a potential future or in the future state where we're talking about allowing our customers to see name to us, yep. that has nothing to do with our DNS at all. They're basically saying that I want uh, perf.example.com to mm -hmm. redirect to request metrics. Right, but we got to... First, the first step that they need to do is they need to create a C name record in their DNS. Nothing to do with us. And then once we validate that's done, we can request a cert from them for that, right? How does that work? We got to make the cert to make it yeah. nice and easy for the customer. But, but you're right? you're right in that their C name will redirect to our validation box. Like, so if, if we go to the Let's Encrypt and we say, hey, we need a cert for, uh, you know, pub.example.com, their C name will redirect to ingest.trackjs.com, right? Which is probably multiple boxes. So mm, we still kind of got okay. that web farm situation. Because like then we'll need to get that cert for pub.example.com and put it on, on, on any box that traffic could come into. All right, yeah. Um, so in that case, we can't use the DNS one. We have to use the HTTP, right? Because we want to have access to the customer's it, DNS. So it sounds like in order to pull off Let's Encrypt, we're going to need essentially some kind of like cert controller which I is like so. with, with with like a job and like some logic in it that's like all right every so often i'm going to go ahead and request the new cert and then i have a way of funneling the challenge token back to me by yep. some means and then i'll get the cert and then i'll make sure that all the boxes yep. who need that cert get it yep and whether that's i mean it could be one of the members of the farm acting as the cert master or maybe it could be like an automation server or our build box, the build box or something like that the, the the Let's Encrypt site claims there's tons of these cert things besides CertBot. I wonder if there's one that just sort so, of works. So I spent a bunch of time looking at these Acme clients, most of them are called, because Acme is like their API. And there's Acme yeah. V1 and V2, and I think you should probably only use V2. I mean, my thought was like we would actually be better off, depending on our use case, using one of these clients. Uh, whether it's a command line client or they actually make like a C-sharp client, like that just, I mean, because it's just web requests, right? Like, so we could actually write some code that handles the vagaries of this, you know what I mean? And, and can handle their challenge request. And, but it's, it's a lot of stuff. 
So the, what's our alternative? So Let's Encrypt is cool and trendy and everybody talks about it and there's some tons of advantages in getting certs dynamically. But what we need right now to launch version one of request metrics is we need a cert that's going to cover a handful of known defined subdomains and that's it. So, well, we, can so do it we, the, we, we can just do it the old school way and get a wildcard cert for what, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, something like that. I submit the developer time would be far more than <laughs> 100 to $200. Now the, we, 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 we may potentially want two wildcard certs just because we have requestmetrics.net and requestmetrics.com. So oh, correct. That, be the, I mean, cause like we do have both certs for track.js. Yep. Which is, is, is kind of nice. Yeah. I agree. So, and then like our downside is that like, let's say, let's say six months from now, which might be aggressive. I don't know. Uh, we're, we're starting to talk about this C name approach. At that point, we'll have to pay the tax to figure out all the goo to make the cert controller mm -hmm. nonsense happen. Uh, in which case we might lose, you know, half of the lifetime of a cert that we pay for. The, the one thing that really bit me about Let's Encrypt is like when you buy a cert and it has a year or a two year expiration on it, like you don't have to think about it again for two years. But with Let's Encrypt, it's like every 90 days, I think they expire. Yeah, and they say you're supposed to do it when a third Th 30, is left. 30 days before, right? So you're looking at six, every 60 days, you're doing this song and dance. So six times a year now. Well, got, the idea is that it's all an automated process that just runs. We have six times a year that the automated process can fail. And <laughs> it's just far enough where you've probably forgotten how the automated process works, except like you're doing it every day, right? It's like you're doing it. So um, anyways, yeah, like if, if you guys were okay with it, I like we the SSL store is a known commodity. We could buy one of those cheap ass, I don't know, who makes some DigiCert or whatever it is that we use and like they, they seem to work okay. So, I think that's yeah. a fair. I think that's a fair plan for now. I think it's way cheaper than the developer time we're going to spend yeah. fussing over this thing that we don't even necessarily need right now. Yeah. Awesome.